Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz. I am your host Amir Naik, and well, today's episode begins with something from Porsche. It's the new generation of the 911, and yes, we got to drive it on a race track, the Bud International Circuit, to be precise, in Delhi. So here it is, our review of the Porsche 911. history legacy heritage think porsche and these are the words that come to your mind and over the years the shape of the 911 has been amazingly resilient to the ever changing landscape of design one glance and it evokes all kinds of automotive emotions in you a porsche launch in india is a special occasion and when it is the new generation 911 it becomes even more special Since 1963, it's built up a reputation as being an everyday sports car, and today, 56 years and seven generations later, we have with us the eighth generation all-new Porsche 911. It's been finally launched in India, and there are two variants. Carrera S is priced at one crore eighty-two lakh rupees, while the Carrera S Cabriolet is priced at one crore ninety-nine lakh rupees. At first glance it may not look drastically different from the previous generation 911 sometimes the devil is in the details and a keener look reveals a few differences all panels of the new generation model are new the contours on the hood and the shape is also new it's slightly edgier than before and the car boasts more than 60% aluminum in comparison to just 30% on the previous model Since 1963, the overall silhouette of the car has remained more or less similar. The flowing, graceful lines, the circular headlamps, and that really sharp bumper up front make for an excellent-looking car. Of course, these do get a few changes. The car is 45 mm wider up front, and also the haunches at the rear. They are also broader. This means better stability and better cornering. The 911 new generation is built on the MMB platform which is again all new and makes for much better handling. The car still retains the 3 liter flat 6 engine but it is now tuned to pump out 444 brake horsepower and 530 newton meters of peak torque which is an increase of 30 brake horsepower and 30 newton meters. The numbers on paper might not amount to much, but the way in which the engine delivers power to the rear wheels is a life-altering experience in itself. It just scares you silly beyond belief. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am behind the wheel of a new generation Porsche 911. This is the 992 model, and we are driving at Bud International Circuit. And yes, lot of understeer. This one is built on an all new platform 450 horses and this one gets an 8 speed PDK automatic gearbox the performance it's exhilarating it's absolutely mental so of course we are driving in a convoy right now and we will not be getting the car all to ourselves and go absolutely bonkers with it but so far so good the handling it's absolutely telepathic you just point the vehicle in the direction you want to go to and it will do the rest so this has been a crazy experience we are getting very very limited lap times with the new 911 but we are going to make the most of whatever we get and so far it's been absolutely phenomenal 
The speed and the grip off would have gone from the previous generation model and the optional rear wheel steering does make for impressive balance when tackling corners hard and fast. The rigidity of the chassis, the precise power delivery and the well-weighted steering wheel come together to offer sheer driving delight. However, we should tell you that these cars are not India spec models. These are international spec models with a bunch of options which may or may not be available in India such as the Sport Chrono package which offers launch control and the Matrix LED lighting system. And then there's the blood curdling growl of the flat six which is something you could never get enough of. The exhaust note and the intake howl come together to produce a soundtrack which is addictive to say the least. But with the addition of bigger twin turbos, bigger intake manifolds and new cooling system with bigger intercoolers, there is a pronounced difference in the way the new 911 makes power and delivers it to the rear wheels. Along with the exterior and performance, the insides too see significant upgrades. The dashboard design is now slightly angular and the multifunction steering wheel along with the instrument console is new as well. It gets an analog rev counter with digital pods flanking either side. The dashboard also houses a new 10.9 inch high resolution touchscreen which gets Porsche communication management as standard on both variants. The quality of materials used and the leather feel premium. Although we aren't big fans of the new gear now. Few cars have the raw sex appeal that the 911 exudes. It looks fast even when stationary, offers extraordinary performance, bosses the racetrack. We do hope to drive the new 911 on regular city roads to see how well it retains the character of being an everyday sports car. So should you buy one? If you have pockets deep enough, then maybe you should be heading to your nearest Porsche dealership already. If not, you have already lived the Porsche 911 life vicariously through our review. I'm your host Amir Naik and yes, as I promised earlier, it's going to be all about two-wheelers in this segment. So let's kickstart things with this bike. It's a Triumph and they call it the Street Scrambler. Modern classic motorcycles are usually elegant, classy and while they might have exhilarating performance, people prefer riding them in a relaxed, easy-going manner. But the 2019 Triumph Street Scrambler is slightly different. It is a modern classic and a good-looking one at that. But it also offers a certain degree of off-road ability and certainly doesn't complain if you go dirty dancing with it. Along with the Street Twin, the Street Scrambler too gets a few updates for 2019. As far as looks are concerned, the Triumph logo on the fuel tank is new and the instrument console too now feels premium with the Bonneville badge on the upper rim. There is a small digital display which reads out information such as fuel, riding modes and other pieces of information. Also, the headlamp bracket is new along with the front fender. But the biggest update has to be to the engine. Like the 2019 Street Twin, the new Street Scrambler also makes 64 brake horsepower instead of 54 on the earlier model. The peak torque output stays the same at 80 Newton meters, but it is tuned to be delivered at 3200 RPM, which means there's even more torque in the bottom and mid range, which is a must for any motorcycle calling itself a Scrambler. The engine and the power delivery is absolutely smooth and refined, and Thanks to a revised ergonomics and flatter and wider handlebars, you can put in more kilometers on this motorcycle. The 900cc parallel twin motor now gets new and lighter parts such as cam covers, dead shafts, crankshafts and balancer shafts and with a slight retune to the engine, it pumps out 18% more power at 64 horses. The engine retains its smoothness and the motorcycle now feels peppier and more eager when building up speed. 
And yes, the low end torque also helps when you go off road. The motorcycle continues to get a bigger 19 inch wheel up front and a 17 inch unit at the rear. Both wheels are spoked and are shot with Mazzillard Touran's dual sport tyres with tubes. Also, the front suspension consists of cartridge type forks with rubber gaiters and is spaced wider apart, which not just gives a purposeful stance to the motorcycle but also gives a more planted front end feel. The front brake is still a single disc unit but gets Brembo 4 piston calipers for better bite. The ride quality in the new street scramble is supple and it soaks up all the bumps and ruts on off road trails quite well. The good part is that the road manners of the street scramble are good too. The other significant update to the new Street Scrambler is to the electronics. The motorcycle now gets three riding modes which are road, rain and off-road. In the off-road riding mode, you can switch off ABS and traction control completely. This isn't a hardcore off-road motorcycle, but if you like hitting up some mild trails, kicking up some dust and looking cool while doing so, this motorcycle does so effortlessly. Going off-road, the Metzelers offer decent grip and the bash plate underneath can take a fair amount of beating along with the suspension. The standing up riding position feels natural too thanks to the taller and wider handlebar. But hardcore off-roading is not what this motorcycle is meant to do. As far as looks are concerned, the motorcycle looks achingly good. The side-mounted exhaust is perhaps the coolest bit on the motorcycle and Unfortunately, it is the least practical too. In Indian summer, the heat from the exhaust is going to roast your right thigh from anywhere between rare and well done. And the fly screen on top of the headlamp is an optional accessory as well. Also, the luggage rack in place of the pillion seat is more or less useless as the maximum weight you can put on it is just 3 kilograms. The street scrambler, in essence, is a lifestyle motorcycle and it offers excellent on-road performance along with decent off-road ability thrown in. It has likeable characteristic and no matter what shape or size you are, swing a leg over it and you will inadvertently end up looking good. Yes, it is that stylish. Priced at 8,55,000 rupees, it is the perfect motorcycle for you if your primary need is to ride a cool, hip motorcycle and go off-road occasionally. If you thought the street scrambler was quite the looker, this next one is going to just sweep you off your feet because it's from BMW. It's the new S1000RR. It's a bike that looks supremely good but misses out on the essential, uh, you know, essential look of the S1000RR. However, it still looks good and it's still great. So here's the first look at the BMW S1000RR. The BMW S1000RR was always one of the best litre class sports bike that money could buy. And this folks is the all new third generation model of the BMW S1000RR launched in India. It will be brought to India as a completely built unit and there will be three variants, which are the S1000RR Standard, the S1000RR Pro, and the S1000RR M Pro. The prices start at 18 lakh 50 thousand rupees and go up to 22 lakh 95 thousand rupees. Again, in India, this will be one of the best litre class sports bikes that you can lay your hands on. The motorcycle is absolutely all new ground up new bodywork, new panels, new design language and even the 999cc inline 4 engine is absolutely new. It makes about 204 brake horsepower and 113 Nm meters of peak torque. The top speed is 299 km per hour and this baby does the 0 to 100 km per hour sprint in less than 3 seconds. Biggest 
updates on this motorcycle is the design language. If you recall, the previous generation S1000 RR had this lovely, iconic, asymmetrical headlamp design. But this motorcycle gets a brand new fairing which has symmetrical LED projector headlamps. BMW says it wasn't easy for them to move on from the asymmetrical design to the symmetrical design. But then, that's how evolution works. The new generation S1000RR will go up against the likes of the Suzuki GSX R1000, the Kawasaki Ninja ZX10RR and its biggest rival will be the Ducati Panigale V4. Well, it's a great bike and yes, we got to ride it too, but we'll have that review for you very soon. Till then, that's all for this episode and we'll meet next time. But obviously, you let us know what you feel. All your feedback is very important to us. So log on to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube or even our website www.carandbike.com and tell us what you feel about the show and also if you want in-depth analysis of all of this these videos are available on youtube too so you can just go back there and watch it again thank you so much for watching until next time uh, well always wear your seat belts and always always wear your helmets while riding